right. We'll turn our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn there. If you only have your cell phone, you can look at it also. Yeah, read the next verse also. For I am jealous for you with the jealousy of God himself. I promise you as a pure bride to one husband, Christ. But I fear that somehow your pure and undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted just as he was deceived by cunning ways of the serpent. Amen. See, Paul was not a fearful person. He was bold. He can face any challenges that really comes. He was not afraid of death. He said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But there is something about him that brought fear into his heart. He said, I'm afraid. Look at that. But I fear that somehow your pure and undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted. Just as he was deceived by cunning ways of the serpent. I'm afraid. He's talking about a fear that he's carrying in his heart. A genuine fear. Something that was really getting his attention. See, I want you to know the bond that he had with the church. Especially to the church in Corinth. He was saying... I have, you know, look at verse 2. For I am jealous for you with the jealousy of God himself. I am jealous for you. I care about you. I think about you. I do not want anything to happen to you. And then he goes on to say, I promised you as a pure bride to one husband. Christ. See, he's bringing the analogy of a husband and wife into this spiritual theme here. I have promised you as a pure bride to one husband. He is telling them, in fact, I have engaged you, I bequeathed you to one man called Christ. So those of you sitting here, I wanted you to understand that analogy in terms of your spiritual connection with Christ. Christ is called the bride, bridegroom. And we are called the bride. Amen. Now the present situation is actually we have made an engagement. We are engaged to Christ. Amen. Can you turn to your neighbor and say you are engaged to Christ? Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even if Jesus comes here to, you know, something to, to, today is the last day of your life on earth or or the Lord is going to come, at least you can say, I got at least engaged. <laughs> Some of you may not get married, probably on this earth, marriage may never take place, but at least you can say, I'm engaged. I had an engagement service. Look at that connection someone can have with Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. You are engaged to Christ, all those people. Who have received Christ into your heart. All those people who believe that Christ died for your sins. All those people who believed I couldn't say myself. But you trusted in Christ. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, in your place, Jesus died on the cross for you. And you believe that in your heart. You confessed your sins and you asked Jesus to come into your heart. You made a place for him. The supreme place in your life. Jesus has become your absolute, absolute. Hallelujah. And you engage. That is called an engagement with Christ. Amen. Amen. Now the next thing happened is the wedding. Amen. And that's what we are eagerly waiting for. One of these days our Lord will come. One of these days our Lord will come. Hallelujah. That's what Bible tells us. That's what Christians believe. That's what the New Testament teaches. One of these days our Lord will come. The trumpet will sound. And those who are believed in Christ and died in their graves, they will rise up from their graves. And those of us who are alive and engaged to Christ, we will be transformed to a glorious body. And together we will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Then we talk about the wedding of the Lamb. Praise God. See, that's the Christian hope. That's what we are waiting for. But there is a fear in the heart of an apostle. So look at the position of these people here today. Just look at it. But I fear that somehow, look at what kind of a people these are. Your pure undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted so now the corruption has not taken place what is the situation now undivided devotion to Christ pure and undivided devotion to Christ praise so now you probably didn't get a Christian or do la yeah God grade you normal a day you know so teach on did it can you group all the Lord of our yeah I'm afraid Praise God. Praise God. In the hour of the Bible study, those of you who came here for the Bible study morning, Malayalam Bible study, is it search, make sure that you still remain in faith. Don't kind of live with this complacency, thinking that, man, everything is going fine, I'm fine, I'm doing okay, I'm just engaged to Him. Now just, just I'm waiting for it. No, you just need to make sure that you maintain that relationship till the very end. Praise God. He said, I'm afraid. You know, people falling away from faith is something that has been happening right from the first century. Okay? It's been happening. But you see the the intensity or the frequency is kind of growing these days. Yes or no? Yes. Reverence in the presence of God is going away. Right, kids? Right? Yeah, I know. See, so when we were young, now my you listen, looking at me here? You listening to me? Yeah, when we were young, when we were praying, you know how we used to pray? We close our eyes, fold our hands. Anytime somebody says, let's pray, this is our, this is our posture. Okay? Now what are you doing when we pray? You open your eyes, scanning the entire area. What's happening? I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about everybody here. Time is really, the, you know, this fear of God is kind of melting away. And there are, there are people sitting here, young men here, with their, their, their smartphones. There are people who are sitting behind me. Tell me what you're doing. So you don't, you don't know the pastor doesn't get to hear. Pastor get to hear everything that is happening here. You think only, hey, you see the, you see, you see the girl, man? The kind of text message that you're sending, Instagram that you're doing right here as you, as you watch, as you're sitting in the presence of God. Who else will talk? I have to tell you because I'm your pastor. Now Paul says in his heart, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. He, he, was, he was so afraid of a community, a church that was in pure devotion to God. 
and who had undivided attention. I cannot say that many of you here. I cannot talk about your devotion, pure devotion, undivided attention. You are divided in your attention. You are scattered in your thought. You can keep yourself here two hours. So I should say I'm terrified about you. Yes, I think I should say that. Where are you? Are you here? Now this is what Paul is feeling in his heart. Hallelujah. You know, very recently, you have heard about some great falling away. Ever since I've been so disturbed. You know, in the past, people like, there was a, there was a guy, there's a Swedish Pentecostal guy, a charismatic person who used to come to India, especially to Kerala. His name was Ulf Akman. He had crusades, Pastors meeting, power conferences, name it all. Now, I just heard that a few years ago, this man has joined Catholicism. Pretty sad. And those of you who, who read Christianity in Crisis, Counterfeit Revival, Kingdom of the Cult, Hank Hanegraaff. You know, we used, I used to read, I used to see, because this is a guy who brings out what is wrong, what's going on. And one day he decided to join Eastern Orthodox Church. That's where this guy's person has gone. This is a people, of course, they didn't abandon faith altogether. They just went to something a little different than what they preach. But very recently, something that really... Was, has bothered me is this because I'm a, I'm a, you know, I used to, I, I still engage in teaching families, you know, doing premarital counseling to young people. One book that I have referred to is actually books written by Joshua Harris. Several of his books Boy Meets Girl, I Kiss, Dating Goodbye, Not Even a Hind, Doug dug down deep in all these different things, especially the, the first two of them. I should refer to people, people who read that Very recently, you, you, I think a lot of you follow the media, what's happening. This is a guy who says, I don't believe. I don't believe this anymore. I doubt my faith. I'm abandoning this faith. And then you, you heard very recently about the Hillsong songwriter. It is very saddening. I don't, want to, I don't want a God who's going to send billions of people into hell. I heard, you know, after that there's some change in him, but whatever it may be, it brought such a confusion to Christianity. These are the people who influence millions of young people around the globe. People don't read Bible. They, of course, listen to these words of their songs and get themselves deep into this one. Two, three hours, they're just listening to the songs written by these people. There was a time they walked with God. There was a time they were in pure devotion to Christ. There was a time they had undivided attention to Christ. But they have fallen. They walked away from faith. I pray for them. My heart is aching for them. Because I was personally involved in terms of us reading these materials. But now the same people are saying, oh, I'm sorry, it was all wrong. And they're walking away. Listen, I, I probably would only say the introduction to my message today, but there are people who responded to that. And one of the responses given by another Christian rock star, I want you to know, by, by looking at them, looking at his tattoos and different things, his hairstyle, you might probably get a different look at him. But on the other side, the response that he has given has actually brought to the attention of a lot of people.
Even Franklin Graham was referring to that. But I just want to say a few things here. Please pay attention. Don't be really looking at your computer at this time or phone at this time. You know, it's out there. You can look at it. But I want you to pay attention here. This is something said by John Cooper. He's one of the lead singers for the band called Skillet. He gave a response to these two individuals in the light of what happened. You know, these two people walking away from faith. Vishwasatilana, Vishwasangalanecha, Ida Samshemita, Chodipoya, Idandu Vakriola, Aidangala, Swadi Nichadunda, Amanishan or response, you know. It really caught my attention also. I'm just reading it for you, for the church to just pay attention. And I, I'm just reading. And I quote, Okay, I'm saying it. Because it's too important not to. What is happening in Christianity? More and more of our outspoken leaders or influencers who were once faces of the faith are falling away. And at the same time, they are being very vocal and bold about it. Shocking, shockingly, they still want to influence others for what purpose? As they announce that they are leaving the faith, I will state my conclusion when I'll state some, then, then I'll state my rebuttals to statements I have read by some of them. Now listen, finally, I never judge people outside of my faith. This is, he is talking about himself. I never judge people outside of my faith, even if they hate religion or Christianity. All right? That is not my place and I have many friends who disagree with my religion and that is okay, that is 100% fine with me. However, when it comes, from, comes to people within my faith, there must be a measure of loyalty and friendship and accountability to each other and the word of God. And now the next paragraph is very important. He says, my conclusion for the church of all, uh, all of us Christians, we must stop making worship leaders and thought leaders or influencers or cool people or relevant people, the most influential people in Christendom. And yes, that includes people like me. I have been saying for 20 years and seem probably quite judgmental to some of my peers that we are in a dangerous place when the church is looking to 20 year old worship singers as our source of truth. We now have a church culture that learns who God is from singing modern praise songs rather than from the teachings of the word of the teachings of the word. I am not being rude to my worship leaders, friends, many of whom would agree with me in saying that singers and musicians are good communicating emotions and feelings. We create a moment and vehicle for God to speak. However, singers are not always the best people to write solid Bible truth and doctrine. Sometimes we are too young, too ignorant of scripture, too unaware of, uh, too unaware of, uh, Sorry, uh, scripture too unaware or too unconcerned about the purity of scripture and the holiness of God we are singing to. Have you ever considered the disrespect of singing songs to God that are untrue of his character? I salute that guy. He had the audacity to stand up and say, the word you need to know about God is from God's word. Hallelujah. You know, we don't have time to listen and read to God's word. We don't have time to sit and meditate God's word. We don't have time for Bible study. But we just simply turn on the radio, listen to some songs, and we think that is our Christianity. That is my worship. It is okay, but I want you to know that it would not cut it. That's not a way that you become a follower of Jesus. You become a follower of Jesus when you read God's word, meditate on it, and the Holy Spirit works in your heart. Bring the truth in your, in your application, in your personal life. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I'm just encouraging my young friends here, my little children here, spend time with God's Word. Memorize God's Word. Bible says, I've, I've hidden your Word in my heart that I may not sin against you. That you may not sin against you. Hallelujah. Parents, you make sure that your children understand God's Word. Memorize God's Word. Read God's Word. If not, I tell you, they will wash away. They will not be able to stand. Hallelujah. A lot of people don't have roots. They don't have foundations. It is a sad thing. And the, in the, I'm just going to do the last part of it here. Is it anyone, see, it it's time for the church to re rediscover the preeminence of the word and to value the teaching of the word. We need to value truth over feeling, truth over emotion. And what we are seeing is now is a result of the church raising up influencers who did not supremely value the truth, who have led, them, led a generation who also do not believe in supremacy of truth. And now those disavowed leaders are proudly still leading and influencing boldly away from the truth. It is important that we need to come back to God's word. You know, generations are divided Sociologists divide generations. You know, baby boomers, they call called baby, baby boomers. These are people who are born between 1946 to 64. People now who are like 54 to 73 years of age. They are called baby boomers. Then we have Generation X. These are people born in 1965 to 1980. Somewhere between 38 to 53 years of age. Then we have millennials, or they call Y generation. 1981 to 96, people are born, 22 to 33, 7 years of age. And then we have post-millennials, people who are born from 1997 uh, to the present. All right, so you put this post-millennials and millennials together. There's a lot of change. They, they think, they process things so differently. They, they are, they, especially when it comes to spirituality and religion, there's so much is at risk. We need to pay attention to that. You know, it says that there are people who did studies on these things. These things are available for us to read. I'm just saying this for us to get an idea as to what is happening today. You know, it says college-aged millennials today are far more likely than the general population to be religious, religiously unaffiliated. They don't have any religious affiliation. You know, Pew Research Center, they documented that the millennials are least outwardly religious Americans, gener American generation. One in four are unaffiliated with any religion. You take four people, four millennials, one of the, one of the four would say, I don't have any religion. I don't believe in anything. No religion for me. All right? But it used to be so different. People of that same age, maybe in another generation. But today, it's, it's an alarming rate. People are walking away from faith. And ask these people, what do you think about Christian church today? What, do you, what is your understanding about Christianity today? It says just over 60% of millennials say that Christianity is judgmental. And 64% say that anti-gay best describes most churches. Sixty-four percent of these millennials today think about Christian church today. Who is talking loud there? Now look at youth ministers. Their observation. These are people in youth ministry leadership level. You know what they say. People who come from so-called Christian family, they say roughly three-quarters will jettison that faith after high school. 
എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ഹൈസ്കൂൾ കഴിയുമ്പോഴത്തേക്കിന് ക്രിസ്ത്യൻ വീട്ടിൽ വന്നൊരു യുനോ മൂന്നിൽ നാലിൽ മൂന്ന് പേരും ആ ഗ്രൂപ്പ് ആൾ മുക്കാൽ ആളുകൾ എന്ത് ചെയ്യുക വിശ്വാസം കളികളും ദൻ അണ്ടർ ഹാഫ് ഓഫ് ദാറ്റ് പീപ്പിൾ നമ്പേഴ്സ് വിൽ റിട്ടേൺ ടു സം ലെവൽ ഓഫ് ചർച്ച് ഇൻവോൾവ്മെൻറ്റ് ലേറ്റ് ട്വൻറ്റീസ് ഓർ ലേറ്റ് തേർട്ടീസ് ഇറ്റ്സ് വെരി സാഡ് you know they also rec- they also notice something that you know experience with the earthly father deeply informs the perspective about the heavenly father today what is happening in this community as a whole i'm not necessarily our church but you take the community as a large the father figure is missing influence of a father is not there they they actually given us reason why what is happening why people are walking away so they have talked to people who are people who walked away from faith they also talked to people who are good you know, people who are professionals people who know about culture and religion and they came up with few things and i'm just going to mention that and we'll close here in maybe in 2 3 minutes all right now the first one they say is that we are especially talking about this millennial generation the mindset they are called digital natives they are called digital natives okay the mindset of the digital natives is very much separate from other generation millennials are eclectic in all friends economically spiritually and artistically namukku ariya eclectic ena padathin jatham vishala vishan nu paranja they want to get from everything they are not they don't have brand loyalty they don't have a brand loyalty they take this from here this from here ellarum kuda cherthottullana parivadi that's how it is they don't care for any more whatever the field it is they, they just want to be shallowed in the kingdom that's a different mindset then breakdown in family is another reason breakdown in the family i don't have to say much about that because you you understand what, what how that would influence their faith third reason they say it's called militant secularism okay okay samara sakti ulla madedaratum okay very secular so the militant secularism around them embraced by media and enforced in schools secular education approaches learning through the lens of methodological naturalism prakriti vadam ennu parayna oru chindayile kaalukale kondu vannirikkana all natural thing naturalism they are talking about it presupposes that all faith claims are merely expression of subjective preference ഈ വിശ്വാസിൽ മതത്തിലും പള്ളിയിലും ഒക്കെ ആളുകൾ വിളിച്ചു പറയുന്ന പലതും ഇറ്റ്സ് മിയർലി എക്സ്പ്രഷൻ ഓഫ് സബ്ജക്റ്റീവ് പ്രിഫറൻസ് ദി ഓൺലി ട്രൂ ട്രൂത്ത് ആർ ക്ലെയിംസ് ദാറ്റ് ആർ ഡൈവോഴ്സ് ഫ്രം എനി സൂപ്പർ നാച്ചുറൽ കോണ്ടക്സ്റ്റ് and impose no moral obligations on ഹ്യൂമൻ ബിഹേവിയർ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ മനുഷ്യന്റെ പെരുമാറ്റവും ദൈവവും മതവും അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ധാർമ്മികതയും ഒക്കെ ആയിട്ട് ബന്ധപ്പെടാത്തത് മാത്രമേ ഉള്ളൂ സത്യമുള്ളത് ഏതെങ്കിലും സൂപ്പർ നാച്ചുറലായിട്ടോ അമാനുഷികമായിട്ടോ ദൈവികമായിട്ട് പറയുന്ന ഓരോ എക്സ്പ്ലനേഷനും സത്യമല്ല സോ വട്ട് ഹിയർ ലിസണിങ് തിങ്സ് ആർ യു ഹിയർ ഫ്രം എ ചേർച്ച് ഇറ്റ്സ് നോ ഗുഡ് ദ കോളേജ് പ്രൊഫസർ ഡോണ്ട് ബിലീവ് ദറ്റ് സ്റ്റഫ് ആൻഡ് എ ജനറേഷൻ ഇസ് ഗ്രോയിൻ ആ ബിലീവിംഗ് ദിസ് സ്റ്റഫ് we are to be careful lack of spiritual authenticity among adults another reason lack of spiritual authenticity among the adults i guess i will close there because i don't have time prayamulla when they look at their fathers when they look at their uncles when they look at their sunday school teachers when they look at the older people listen they see lack of spiritual authenticity many youth have had no or very limited exposure to adult role models who knew what they believe why they believe it and are committed to constantly living it out touch listen very carefully 
why they walking away from faith amen okay jo amme odu amme what do you believe daddy odu daddy what do you believe i don't know i learned things in you know, a go to church we believe in getting saved and this in why you believe it why you believe the word of god why you believe this book is a word of god father do you have an answer for that this is some people got together and they got together and put it all together do you have anything more to say daddy why you believe in a god where is god we don't know why we believe we don't know what we believe even the things that we believe we don't live it out we are communicating to our children makla this is all for the church and you know this everybody say pastor say everybody say but that's not practical life you know it's not possible why should he believe your your belief you're influencing him the reasons why people walking away from church is not because anything wrong with god's word anything wrong with god anything wrong with jesus christ nothing of the christianity it's wrong with the adults that means young people are not excused here today but think about if this is what is happening to you when you have children what will their condition what will be their condition paul is saying i'm afraid i'm so afraid ക്രിസ്തുവിനോടുള്ള ഏകാഗ്രതയും നിർമ്മലയും വിട്ട് നിങ്ങളുടെ ഹൃദയം വഷളായി പോകുമോ എന്ന് എന്റെ ഹൃദയം ഭയപ്പെടുന്നു ഐ പ്രേ ദ യു ബിഗിൻ ടു ഫിയർ ഇറ്റ് ടുഡേ പേരന്റ്സ് ഐ പ്രേ ദ ഫിയർ വിൽ ഗ്രിപ്പ് യുവർ ഹാർട്ട് ടുഡേ നിങ്ങളുടെ ഹൃദയത്തിൽ ആ ഭയം ഒന്ന് വരട്ടെ ഐ ആം അഫ്രൈഡ് ഐ ആം അഫ്രൈഡ് വെൻ ദ ലോർഡ് കംസ് ടുഡേ മൈ സൺ മേ നോട്ട് കം മൈ ഡോട്ടർ മേ നോട്ട് മേക്ക് ഇറ്റ് ടു ഹെവൻ ഡോണ്ട് ജസ്റ്റ് സിംപ്ലി തിങ്ക് ഓ ഹി വിൽ ബി ദെർ നോ he will not be there if he doesn't walk according to god's word hallelujah hallelujah parents let people see the authenticity of your faith then the vishwasathinte ah authenticity on the halgal on the kaanate that you believe what you say yes you have a reason to stand up and say the prarthikunnathu ne kanneer olikkunnathu ninde magan onnu kaanate hello remote control el therina ariyale i'm talking i'm not talking about you tossing the remote control or throwing the pan around but you shedding your tears on your knees crying and pray you see you let your son see you reading bible and meditating you don't have time for it don't expect then your son to be a spiritual person hallelujah will you close your eyes for a moment i know i, I took little time hallelujah ella kanagalu nadache Hallelujah I'm just saying I really felt such a strong urge in my heart and the hrudayathil and you don't be a compromiser brother don't be a compromiser my adult brothers and sisters here don't be a compromiser logathod loga sahitam daivathod shastrathu anu orthanam logathod your friendship with the world is enmity with god Hallelujah start living out your faith start living out your faith Hallelujah we have come to the lord's table it's a place where you can confess your sins nammada paavangal neethu parayan namukku pattiya stalam it's a presence of god amen it is in the presence of god that you can come the in front of the lord's table hallelujah that it reminds you that his blood was shed for you he died in your place church we need to wake up സഭ ഉണരേണ്ട സമയമായിരിക്കുക കുടുംബങ്ങൾ ഉണരേണ്ട സമയമായിരിക്കുക ദൈവസഭയിലെ പാസ്റ്റർ നിങ്ങളുടെ മക്കളെയും നിങ്ങളെയും നന്നാക്കുമെന്ന് വിചാരിക്കേണ്ട കാലമില്ല ഇറ്റ് ഷുഡ് സ്റ്റാർട്ട് അറ്റ് ഹോം നിങ്ങളുടെ വീട്ടിൽ ആരംഭിക്കേണ്ട സമയം ഇറ്റ്സ് ടൈം ദ ഫാദേഴ്സ് നീഡ് ടു റൈസ് അപ്പ് മദേഴ്സ് നീഡ് ടു റൈസ് അപ്പ് ചിൽഡ്രൻ ഗെറ്റ് യു നോ മേക്ക് ഷുവർ ദറ്റ് യു റെക്കൻ സൈൽ യുവർ സെൽഫ് വിത്ത് ഗോഡ് ദൈവത്തോട് നിരന്തു പോക ഡു യു ഹാവ് എ വൈബ്രൻറ്റ് ഫെയ്ത് ഡു യു ഹാവ് എ ഡയനമിക് റിലേഷൻഷിപ്പ് വിത്ത് ക്രൈസ്റ്റ് is christ your number one priority or are you just playing it he sees everything you do everything you watch everything you text every place you go everything he sees it you cannot hide it from him that i will namaku delpichu kodukan shall we give ourselves into god's hand